This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Let me ask you something. Did you enjoy that footage reel where you're like, damn, yo, Patrick is just firing in all cylinders right now. This shit is so bloody cinematic. It's like I'm watching Interstellar or something, man. This guy's just off the chain. His talent and ability is making me feel like I will never amount to anything in this world. You just think it's the best thing you've ever watched in your life, right? <laughs> no, but honestly, I think it looked pretty good, right? It looked nice, but I pulled a fast one on all of you. And this is just like one of the oldest tricks in the book when it comes to cinematography. And that is just shooting with shallow depth of field. I think we can all probably agree that if you just shoot something wide open, whether it's f2.8, f1.4, f1.8, it automatically feels cinematic. And I wanna propose a thesis that states that shallow depth of field is not cinematic unless you use it properly. Now you might be watching this for a review of the Mikey 50mm f1.2 and trust me, we're gonna get to that. But I think we need to talk about shallow depth of field as a whole within the cinematic landscape before we get to this lens and it'll make more sense when we get there. But playing with this lens and shooting at f1.2 made me think a lot about my favorite movies. I was just recently rewatching Shawshank Redemption, which is shot by Roger Deakins and almost 80 to 90% of this film is quite deep focus. It's all about composition and blocking. Even this shot from Sicario, it's not about being at like T2 or F1.2 or F1.4. It's a well lit, well blocked scene and a well composed frame. You don't need someone entirely blurred out in the background just popping off the frame just for something to feel cinematic. So much like slow motion, so 120 FPS, 60 FPS is used as a bit of a crutch for us as YouTubers and filmmakers and cinematographers, I think we're also relying on shallow depth of field a little bit too much just because it looks cool. And it's not really our fault. In the 90s, even the early 2000s, the separation between movies and consumer cameras really was shallow depth of field. But then of course, when the 5D and DSLR started shooting video, we could all of a sudden blur the background. We could use faster lenses and actually get depth of field. Whereas camcorders and the cameras that we had access to and even phones today, we can't get really much of that separation. So once you do get a taste of being able to pop somebody out of the background, you just wanna eat it all up. You want everything to be shallow depth of field. And I'm gonna propose an idea to you to try stopping down your lens a little bit. And I want you to watch movies from a different point of view. I want you to look at scenes and understand was shallow depth of field used just to look cool or was it used narratively? Which I think is how you should approach shallow depth of field. I wanna give you one more example. David Fincher is very good at using shallow depth of field sparingly. He uses it as a narrative device and not so much as just a way to make an image look cool. If we load up this clip from Seven, you can see that in this scene, we have just been through this whole crazy chase sequence. Brad Pitt is now stuck in an alley with a man with a gun. We have no idea who this man is. We are now in the point of view essentially of Brad Pitt's character. And this is where he switches to a completely shallow depth of field. It's like we're only seeing what Brad Pitt can see in the rain, which is almost nothing. And it makes the gun and that figure so much more terrifying because you don't know who it is or what their intentions are or what's gonna happen. You are stuck in this small little world with them. Now within the exact same movie, if we're just in an office and there's three people talking, there's no reason to have shallow depth of field here. Why should Brad Pitt be completely blown out from the background when he's just talking with Morgan Freeman and these two other gentlemen? So here, everything is very deep focused. We can pick out library details on the shelves. We can pick out everything. We can look at lamps. We can look at all the details Details within this frame when we're pulled into it. Today, I feel like a lot of cinematographers have lost this art of deciding when to use shallow depth of field and when not to. I was just watching The White Lotus, which is a great show, but this entire show is shot very, very wide open. And I don't really see much of a narrative reason for it other than it just looks cool. Now that's not to say that you can't be making images that just look cool. As a cinematographer, we're all here to make beautiful images. And sometimes that is just being shallow depth of field. But as filmmakers, I think we should be thinking a little bit differently. I think when you wanna stop down to F1.2 like you would with this 50 mil Mikey lens, what's the reason for? Is it just because you think it looks interesting or could it be something that accents a point in your narrative? Now, before we move on to the more review focused part of this video, we have a new channel sponsor. So let's hear from them real quick. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There's classes on design, filmmaking, YouTube, cinematography, and a whole lot more. 
I've personally been enjoying MKBHD's course on YouTube as I continue to grow this channel and expand my own personal brand. The way he breaks down planning a video from start to finish has made my own process much more manageable and also enjoyable. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Now let's talk about this lens specifically within the context of what we've just been talking about because it's a complicated lens for me. I think on one hand, if you're someone who's very into that shallow depth of field, having an f1.2 lens at 50 millimeters on a full frame camera like I used with the Lumix S5, it is a very interesting and cool look. I was using it a lot for cars because you guys know I shoot a lot of cars and being able to blow a background on an entire vehicle is really interesting and cool. And the thing that I like about it is that it lets me stand apart a little bit, which was most cameras and most people that shoot cars shoot a lot more deep focus. And I'm really into this idea of being able to pop the background and have just the car in frame and in focus. So from a photography standpoint, I really think it's absolutely beautiful. And this is a photography focused lens. This lens is also quite cheap and I think if you are a photographer, I think you can look at this lens a lot differently than as a filmmaker. This is a photo lens and it's also fully manual. There's no autofocus on this. So it feels a lot more analog when you're using it too. But I just kind of had to get over that whole hurdle that we were just talking about of like, do I even really like super shallow depth of field, especially in video? Like there's nothing really particularly interesting about someone reading a Kindle on the edge of a bed. But if you shoot that thing at F1.2, all of a sudden we're all like, Damn, that's cinematic. And if you shot this at like 24 f 2.8, I still think you get the effect of it being cinematic, but does it really have to be shallow depth of field? And I'm just wrestling with that in my mind. So if you do want a lens that is super shallow and for full frame and it's well built and well made, the Mikey 50 mil f 1.2 is a really great lens. And in the context of how I use these cameras with the Lumix S5, if I wanted a 50 mil f1.4 for the S5 with autofocus and everything, I'm looking at three, $4,000. So cost ROI, it's very hard for me to nitpick this lens. One quirky thing that I found with my copy of this Mikey lens is that the focus was a little bit sandpapery. I'm gonna reach out to Mikey to see if it's just an issue with my copy because I haven't seen anybody else complaining about it, but mine just felt a little bit grindy when I was manually focusing. The focus would feel really nice if it didn't have that slight grind to it, but that is something to be aware of. Your mileage may vary on the quality front, but Mikey historically has been very good with customer service, so I'm not entirely worried about that. But in a nutshell, this 50 mil f1.2 Mikey lens is one of those lenses where at this price point at under $400, I think it's really interesting to have it in your kit as something you can just sort of jump out with and say, hey, why don't we just try a couple with this lens, really blow that background out, get some nice pop. It's not something I would wanna shoot with all the time. I think you need to think of it a bit more narratively and don't use shallow depth of field as a crutch because I think the way to make shallow depth of field cinematic is to use it in a cinematic sense, which means use it at a point in your story where the narrative makes sense, like that example David Fincher used in Seven, not just as a way to make something look cool because you can, because just because you can, it doesn't mean that you should. Apologies that the light was all over the place in this video because I'm using the sun and I can't control the sun. It has a mind of its own. Maybe one day I will harness the power of the sun. I'll like fall into a vat of acid and become the Joker and not actually have superpowers, just become a lunatic. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about anymore. Anyways, hey, my name is Patrick Tomasso. I hope you like this video. If you have questions about the Mikey 50 mil f1.2 or anything that we talked about in this video, let me know in the comments and you will see or hear me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers.